Hi everyone, I'm Julia Lee Harder. I talk about disability and neurodivergency and welcome to the lovely library. As you can tell, I have my emotional support milk carton cat back there and I also have my chihuahua for this topic today. We're gonna to be talking about medical gaslighting and the ways women are treated poorly in the medical system, so much so that I believed I was crazy. So let's talk about it. I started this channel almost two years ago, made one video and then a lot of stuff happened. I graduated college, got my first job as a writer for Google, fell in love, and wrote a book. Well, am writing a book. A couple more drafts to go. I got a diagnosis from the Mayo Clinic after two years of navigating the medical system undiagnosed, and then more recently, I added some diagnoses to my punch card, and one of those is ADHD. Looking back at these last couple of years, I realized that I did a lot. That's not really surprising to the people in my life because I've always been a person that needed to be doing a ton of different things. Now I'm throwing YouTube in the mix, so like I mentioned, ADHD. But I'm really proud of myself because what many people don't know is that I spent a good portion of that time being very ill. I was 17 at the Houston Rodeo when I had my first seizure. And it was a really jarring experience to lose control of my body like that in such a public, large place, and it kicked off years of doctors, hospital visits, and tests. The frequency of these attacks picked up so much so that I fell into an almost daily cycle of having a seizure, being sedated, and then being basically unable to do anything. But my EEGs consistently showed that I wasn't epileptic. What I was experiencing was something different, but it was still really real. Prior to this, I was a varsity cheerleader, a top student, involved in just about every extracurricular you can name. I had just been voted most likely to succeed by my high school graduating class, and now I couldn't even get out of bed. I began experiencing muscle weakness, chronic pain, and extreme fatigue. I was about to go off to college, so I was terrified. So naturally, I asked for help. I feel very naive in retrospect because I thought what would happen would be that I'd go to a doctor, they'd find the problem and they'd fix it. It was a lot more complicated than that. But I also didn't see coming the amount of blame I'd come up against. I was pretty used to people trusting me, but there's good old medical gaslighting. Gaslighting is a word that's kind of made its rounds lately and sometimes it's used incorrectly, so let me explain. The term comes from a play in the 1930s about a man attempting to make his wife believe that she's going insane. He keeps doing nefarious things that are causing the gaslight in their house to dim, and he keeps insisting to her that it's not happening and that she can't trust her own experiences. It's deeply psychological. I think the term carries over pretty perfectly when describing my diagnostic experience. Medical gaslighting can look like a combination of things like refusing to listen to or discuss your symptoms, belittling you, or blaming your pain only on things that they perceive to be your fault, such as weight, exercise, stress. Marginalized groups that already struggle to be taken seriously are often most affected, I felt this as a young woman, and I'll get more into that later. This is eerily common, and I hate to say it, but if I hadn't gone through this as my own experience, I might have said something like, well, why don't you just look for a new doctor? But it's not that simple, because this is a problem almost everywhere. You don't know who to trust, and appointments require like a six-month waiting list, and then when you get there, they kind of all start the same. You spend forever writing out your medical history and then the doctor comes into the room and you have to tell it to them all over again. Every single appointment required me to relive the traumatic experiences that came with my illness. I learned to be strategic enough in how I presented myself so that it was clear that I was asking for help and I was communicating that, but not so strategic that the doctors could write me off as a liar. I learned how to present myself as being in distress without being able to be written off as unstable. In one experience, I went to my primary care physician. I knew that he wasn't an expert in the symptoms I was experiencing, but I needed a referral, so I essentially needed his permission to get this MRI done. I gave him my usual monologue of symptoms, when they started, what I was experiencing, what meds I'd taken, what tests I'd had done. And then I got into the harder stuff, how the pain was keeping me in bed when I wanted to be out with friends and how 
I don't remember my prom night because of the medication I was taking. I was rightfully nervous. Once I finished, he just stared at me. And then he asked me to try repeating what I just said, but this time without saying any filler words like like or um. He went into a rant about how unprofessional teens are these days, especially young women. Like, sir, I've lost the ability to walk. I'm a public speaker. I speak professionally all the time, and I've been doing theater since I was in the third grade. I used filler words because I was nervous. And why wouldn't I be when every single doctor I've seen has given me a million reasons not to trust them? He later apologized, but mainly because my MRI came back spotty. Another time, I was admitted to the ER and then the hospital, and I had a neurologist walk into my room at midnight, tell me that there was nothing she could do for me because I just wasn't trying hard in therapy, and then leave. <laughs> the exchange was all of 10 minutes long. That was the first time I met her and I was charged hundreds of dollars for that visit. She then insisted that I be discharged after getting a lumbar puncture. I told them I can't stand up without throwing up, so maybe I shouldn't be discharged yet. And they said, that's okay, we'll get you a wheelchair. They made me wait two days before I was allowed to come back and be readmitted because my spinal fluid was leaking. I don't wanna say this to scare anyone off from seeking help, but I do want to share my experience, and this became a reoccurring theme. I was passed off from specialist to specialist, all of whom were looking for reasons that they couldn't trust what I had to say. I was doing well in school, so obviously it couldn't be that bad, except I wasn't, and it was. I was in therapy, but not like the right kind of therapy, so obviously my issue must be entirely psychological. Everything was a big catch-22. I wasn't exercising because I was in pain, but to the doctors, I was in pain because I wasn't trying. I was depressed from months in bed, but I couldn't talk about that because it made me easy to dismiss. I was a trope, a mentally unstable woman, an anxious kid. The thing about pain is that it's so easy to attribute to this moral failing. He was overweight, she smoked, they put themselves under too much stress, but it's so hard to develop empathy. And the worst part is that I started to believe it. I was 18 and these were the people I was supposed to trust with my life. I didn't feel like I had control over my pain, but what if on some buried subconscious level I did? What if I was somehow essentially choosing this? What if the problem isn't my body, it's me. If you're at that point right now, I want to tell you this. Even if it was purely psychological, I was still a kid and I deserved help. You deserve help. I came to believe that I was this kind of unreliable narrator of my own pain, but that's not even a thing. If I had a thumbtack in my shoe, and to me that felt like being cut open with a chainsaw, I would still be living every single day with the pain of being cut open by a chainsaw. So no, I didn't choose this. And these days I'm just, I'm filled with that feminine rage. I'm like Florence Pugh in Midsommar. I now know that I have functional neurological disorder, which is under-researched, misunderstood. It's a tied to a lot of unhelpful names and ideas like conversion disorder, somatoform disorder, um, even hysteria. If you want to deep dive into FND, let me know. I wanted a diagnosis so bad because I was so tired of people telling me I was fine when I so clearly wasn't. It took two years and a flight to Florida to get that diagnosis, and even then, I didn't get any real treatment. That's early for these kinds of disorders. I know people that it took them a decade to get diagnosed. That's a decade of dealing with these symptoms without an answer or with an incorrect answer. I'm really lucky that I had the support system I did and frankly, the financial stability to keep searching. Even with a diagnosis, I still feel crazy some days. And even after finding a super supportive community, the things that were said to me stick with me. But I've learned that those voices aren't my own. I made this video because I know there are so many people out there that feel like they are begging to be believed. I was one of those people. And I just want you to know that I believe you. 
I want to extend that belief to myself as well. Hope you all enjoyed the video. It's a pretty happy one, I know, but I'm just getting started up. So please let me know if there's any other topics you'd like me to talk about and any support is appreciated. You can check out my writing and thank you so much.